and welcome to the fourth video. I will be uh, in this video explaining the uh, run and walk curves in the jump booster script. I'll be explaining how they work and I will be showing you how to adjust them and I'll also be showing you when you may need to adjust them. Now the good news is uh, these were previously uh, broken kind of. <laughs> when you created the character, when you added the script to the character, these would be blank. I've changed that now so they will set up auto automatically. For most people, you will never need to touch these curves. They will work absolutely fine. Uh, but for others, they may need to be tweaks, and I'm going to go over that now. Okay. First thing, I'm just going to remove all the scripts, and we'll start with a blank slate. So, as before, I've got the character in the scene with no scripts on him, and um, and I'm going to start from, from there. So, I'm going to go to Scripts, Third Person, find KBH, Character Control Estates, and I'm going to drag him onto the character in the hierarchy. You can see now it's populated the character with all the scripts, and everything is good to go. If I press play, he'll be good to go. Uh, and unlike unlike before, unlike the last video, I've now automated these two graphs, so straight away his jumps will be working. And that'll be it for most people. However, um, some people may want to get a little bit more under the hood, and they may wish to change some animations. Maybe they want to add their own animation, or they may want to adjust the animation that I've provided. And in which case, uh, the jumps may break. And it's because of this curve, and um, I will uh, I will show how show you how to fix that. So first of all, I'm going to purposely break one of the animations. I'm going to go to Assets, Animations, and this is where all of my animations are listed. And I'm going to find KBH underscore male one underscore walk jump no height. If we click on this little preview, you can see the animation. And the way I've currently got this animation set up is I wanted it to be quite responsive. So the moment you press the space bar, the moment you press the jump, uh, the character will begin his jump. Now, it's actually animated. Uh, that, that is with the start frame of 19 and it ends at 58. They're the frames of the animation. It's actually animated with... Uh, more of a walk cycle before that. So if I put the start frame to zero and press play, you'll see there's a little walk before he jumps. Some people may uh, need or want this for the games, so it's there. Um, however, it does cause an issue with the um, with the jump with the jump script and the curve, which I'll go through now. So I'm going to change the start time to 10 instead of 19. So there's a few more frames at the start. Um, and it'll be a little le less responsive when you press jump and click apply. Now it's hard to see, it's something more you feel, so I'm pressing jump and I'm not actually taking off straight away, but um, like I say, this may be something that somebody needs for their game. And I'll show you the problem that does cause. So if I rotate to this character to the side and I jump, you can see the vertical movement starts before the animation actually takes off. And it's causing it's causing problems with the animation, and it just doesn't it doesn't look very good. Thankfully, there's a way to fix that. I'll go through it. So I'm going to click on the character. I'm going to go to the jump booster third person script section of it. I'm going to go to walk curve because this is the walking jump, and I'm going to click on the green line to open up the curve. Now I'm going to quickly explain how the curves work. <coughs> when the character jumps a timer is started, it goes from zero and it will run until the character lands. Now what happens then is based on this timer, so for example if it's um, zero seconds in, it's just started, it will read a value from this curve. So at zero it will read a value of five. At about, mm, at about 0 0.4 it will read a value of zero and at one second in it will read a value of minus eight. Now this um, is then evaluated, and as the time goes along, these these um, values will be 
fed into a movement, a character, a character movement. So at the very start, the character will be moving up at its, at its fastest. It will be moving up uh, vertically by five, five units. And as the timer goes along, the character will slow down, slow down, slow down, until he reaches the peak of his jump, which point the vertical movement will be zero, and then he will begin to accelerate downwards as the time goes along. So this is this is basically this is basically the jump, the vertical movement up to stop to down. Now, if you visualise the animation as we've got it now, as we've just changed it, at the start of that animation, the character is actually walking, so there shouldn't be any vertical movement at the start of that animation. So I'm going to move this uh, first key to zero, and you can see that the graph has become curved. This is because it's got smooth tangents. So that's the first thing we'll need to change. Drag a box over the two keys, right click one, go to both tangents, click linear. Now I've got a straight line, that's what we need to work with. So, as I say, it starts off with zero movement. And then, for a short period of that animation, the, it will remain at zero movement. So I'm going to add a second key by right clicking on the green line and clicking add key. And I'm going to move that second key to zero. And I'm going to do that at about 0.10, a tenth of a second. Um, this is this is eyeballing this. this is, it's not that precise. You may need to do a few uh, tweaks and trial and error until you get your uh, correct vertical movement based on the animation. So from zero to a tenth of a second, there's no vertical movement. And then suddenly we need a lot of vertical movement because at the start of the jump, that is when the vertical movement is the fastest. So add another key and move it to uh, five or whatever value will work for your animation and make that so it's a steep, a steep incline. And that will be it. So just to reread this graph, it's going to go zero vertical movement at the start, nothing until a tenth of a second, and then suddenly there'll be a, a strong force, there'll be a big push upwards, and uh, it will slow down to zero, and then fall back to the ground again. Now if we play again, and turn, turn the character to the side, and do a jump, you can see that is working a lot nicer than before. Um, there may be it may be worth going back in there and tweaking the values ever so slightly, but uh, for a large part that that looks that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so most people probably won't need this video as I mentioned, but for anyone who um, is going to change the animations, I'm probably going to be referring them to this video. And uh, that's that for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.